pull on them because if you don't, boy, they'll take over and and uh, then nobody can raise a crop or or raise livestock and different animals are are killers, you know. And the beaver are they do a lot of damage. You know. I leave the ones alone that aren't doing any any damage, you know. We're off to skin the beaver. Jake makes a living the same way as Bridger would have done. And as you watch him, you can see that he's every bit the expert. See, you only make one cut straight on through when you're skinning a beaver. His craftsmanship is born out of years of practice. It's exactly this level of knowledge that the mountain men relied upon. Uh, it's good meat. Uh, uh, the mountain men, if they were short on meat, they ate all beaver meat, but uh, uh, they always liked to mix elk and deer and stuff like that, moose, and once in a while butchered a bear for the fat. Nice beaver. <laughs> Watching Jake, it's hard to believe that he's actually 90 years old. I've just got a little little ways to go here, and then I'll I'll uh, uh, put it on a on a hoop, just like the mountain men did in the early days. The only difference we use iron now, and they used willows. Here, here. On Bridger's very first expedition, a colleague of his called Hugh Glass had a run-in with a grizzly bear that nearly cost him his life. He was mauled and left for dead, with all but the bare minimum of his possessions. Stranded alone in the wilderness and horribly injured, Hugh Glass worked miracles that became a legend. Finding his razor, in his possibles bag, he used it to create sparks to get a fire going. Something like... Hammer them in and hook them, hook them on there. See, that's the way we hoop them. Well, you gotta have it just taut. If you have it too tight, uh, the, that'll kind of warp, and sometimes it'll rip these out. So you gotta have a little, little bit, uh, a little bit loose there. When that's dry, that'll be solid. You know. And uh, so you got to know the right tension. Same way when you're building a drum, you got to have it about that loose because if you make it plumb tight, uh, it'll it'll bust while it's drying. The Indians killed white men that way. They sewed wet rawhide around their head and staked them out on a s ant hill. And uh, when that uh, when that shrunk, uh, why then then their brain swelled up and they died. Wouldn't that be a hell of a way to die? I'd rather die from a jealous husband or something like that. <laughs> Should get us going, shouldn't it? The old cowboys used to. See? See that helps? Yep. See how it works? And if the cowboys were riding where there's a lot of dry land, they'd let their horse drink out of their hat. <laughs> Well,
we'll just let that yeah, uh, go for now. What have we got in there? Peach gobbler and uh, beaver stew. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to burn it. Let's have a look. No, oh, the, look at that. That's the stew. <laughs> there you go, Jake. Good, good, yeah. Right, Got so a good, good scald on it. Mm -mm. Got a good flavor to it. Jim Bridger was a renowned storyteller. Mm. Jake is no different. Well, Jake, what, what about when you were a, a young man? Yeah, um, I've been clocked two or three different times where I walked uh, 40 miles in one day. Uh, uh, one, one of them, i got to tell you the story about this. I, I got done early with my hunters, and John Bradford had a hunting camp up on Togarty Pass, and uh, there was a, a, a quite a group of Mormons came in there, and they had a guy from a BYU football player. They was all telling what a hell of a tough guy he was and how far he could walk. And, and John Bradford knew me real well, you know. He, he said, well, you guys can brag your man up all you want. He'll never outwalk that guy right there. He pointed to me, you know. And, oh, they said, uh, you want to make a bet? And John said, yeah, well, uh, how much you want to bet? And there were several hundred dollars bet, you know. And so we left it. Uh, in the dark, we had a flashlight, and I walked over to Cottonwood Bench, which was 20 miles, and boy, it was right on my butt all the way, and coming out, we were about halfway out, and I looked over my shoulder, and I couldn't see him, so I walked back, and, and there he was sitting by a little, a little stream, and had his shoes off, and, and he had blisters on his feet, and he said, you win, he said, you, you go on, I'll hobble on in, and, and you know, I dog trotted on out and saddled two horses and went and went back and got them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so old, old John Bradford, he said, "See, I told you guys, there wasn't nobody gonna outwalk Jake." <laughs> Like Jake, Jim Bridger spent his lifetime exploring this area. Every valley might be the key to finding a way through to the west. Following in his footsteps, I can see how difficult it must have been to find a way through for the wagon trains. It would have been impossible without the support of the local inhabitants, the Shoshone, a tribe with an incredibly strong tradition of helping fellow travelers. Leo, a leading member of the tribe, is making jerky from elk meat in the traditional way. How do you do your, 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 your jerky? What's your method? What I do is cut all the way through this without cutting my fingers. Yep. And uh, you just gotta kind of have a feel. These, these knives are just razor sharp. Yep. But we want this meat just as thin as we could get it. So you decide to unroll it, aren't you? Yeah, we want it as big and as thin as we could get it. I remember way at the head of this canyon up on top here is some of the first time I remember making dry meat. Yeah. My dad was up there and that's all we did is he'd kill, kill an elk or something and there's no refrigeration up there at all so we just jerked it all. Once the meat is sliced thinly yeah, enough, you up. hang it onto a simple drying rack and season it. Here's one of these ones that you've done. I'm gonna have to, that's a handful there. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to be done. This ain't the first time you ever done this. 